right, so we're going to start building a brick a brick breaker game. Again, there is an older brick breaker version here. Um, basically, we're going to go into games and we're going to start with a blank template. Uh, we'll stay with blueprints, uh, desktop. We'll, we'll make this scalable so we don't blow our computer out. Um, we're going to turn off the starter content. And the goal is that, again, like I've said just before, um, we're going to build everything from materials to the models from what we have access in the in the in the editor. Uh, the only things that again we're, that we'll eventually import would be some sounds. Um, this is going to be brick breaker uh, 2024 today, and we're going to create a new uh, new project. First thing we're going to do is actually go and create a new level, and I'm going to it just could be an empty level. Pull this over to the side. Do they want to open this? Or? Uh, actually, uh, let's make a new level in Basin. So all the things that we don't need is the experimental height fog, sky atmosphere, skylight, uh, the sky sphere, the volumetric cloud. We don't need any of this. Uh, we will be keeping the directional light, uh, the floor, and then um, the player start. Pretty much all that we really need. I'm going to file and I'm going to... Save as. Uh, under content, I'm going to just make a new, uh, let's create a new folder here for, let's call it bricks for right now. I'm going to call the this map bricks game. Um, and I'm basically under the project settings. Uh, under maps and modes. Um, basically, uh, we will change from game mode. We'll create our game mode in a moment. But uh, we need to just set this to Bricks game for right now. So that when, we, when we, we're loading up the game, uh, basically we'll come to this map directly. So the, let's go to our content draw. Um, we're going to make a new folder. Just materials. Guys. And we are going to create, um, basically we're going to, so the next step is basically creating all the materials that we'll need. Um, the first one we're going to do is a mat. Floor. Um, So I haven't really shown you the shader graph as of yet. Um, for our purposes, we're basically going to plug in um, a material, basically a, a vector that's going to be. So you're going to hold down three key and hit, and that will create a vector three. I mean, I can do a one and hold, a two and hold, so I can get a vector one, a vector two, vector three. And so for our purposes, we're going to just plug in essentially this color into our base color. And we want 0 0.01 across the board. So we want something that is black, but not pure black. So again, the issue that we are facing ultimately is that when basically lighting is a uh, multiplication question. So if we use perfect zeros across the board, um, we're not going to get any, any light. So um, 
this is why we're going with a 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01 um, as opposed to zeros, so that we get some lighting. Lighting is effect, affected by what we're doing. All right, and I'm going to... Yes, save the material. Um, and I'm actually going to go in, and this is, again, again, this is going to be our floor. And we'll start off with this being our floor. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to just, again, again, create multiple materials. Plug that in. Um, this is going to be a yellow material. And I'm going to save it. Yes. And I'm going through the list of things here. There is what we were we're going to call our bat. So. I'm going to rename this to M. And there we go. In our case, the bat is going to be 0.5 across, so it's going to be gray. Um. There was one thing that needed to change on the ball. Um, I wanted to plug this not just into base color. Um, I want to plug this into the emissive color and as a specular. Let's give it a bit of, bit of glowing effect. Save. Uh, on the floor, I wanted to plug this into the specular as well. So it gave it, so it's less, so the specular basically is less of an effect. So it'll be dark, it'll be dark but the, you can see some highlights of that specular right here. So we're going to apply those changes. See, there's two more materials we need to create. Uh, the the wall, and then I'm just going to make our our first brick. All right. So for the wall, again, third uh, vector three. Again, I'm holding down the th three key and hitting click in here. Uh, this is going to be 0.9 ac across the board, if I can get it correctly. And this is also going to co connect into the emissive color. So, a little bit of glow. Uh, we'll save that. And then the brick is the last piece that we need to create. And this is going to connect to the base color and to specular. And this is going to be just a blue. So these are going to be our, our basic materials right now. So with those, we can now set up our arena setup. Um, let me see. Here's our floor. Oh, why am I? I'm going to leave the floor as it is. Oh, no. We want. Oh, um, I scaled it up by 12. There we go. 
Uh, directional light, and this is basically I'm going off values that I have here. Uh, we want this to be at 115, negative 80, and 0. Uh, scale is irrelevant on the directional light, so I'm going to make sure, yeah, we'll just reset this back to 1. Um, we are going, again, the first thing we're going to do is actually go to our basics. Uh, it's not under basics. Um, uh, we're going to look for a camera. And we're just going to grab a camera actor. And we're actually going to go and we're gonna rename this folder. Let's call it level. Um, our floor is going to be in here. Uh, we actually may need, need the player start. But I'm going to put the camera actor in here. And this is I'm just going to call this main camera. Um, we're going to position the camera at 3,000 up. Uh, it's going to be rotated down at the floor. Uh, field of view, we're going to set this to 120 just to make get a nicer view. Um, and then the, the thing that's interesting on this one, there is auto player activation, auto, auto activate for player, and it's basically we're going to set this to player zero. So when, when we start our game, basically, let me pull this back so we have room to see. So this is the view of the camera. Basically, we'll press play, and this is what we are we're going to get effectively. I think I went wide, but um, the walls are going to be basically our, our our cube actors. So we're going to go, and I'm just going to add shape cube, and I'm going to go right in right away, and I'm going to use the wall material on it. There we go. Um, and this is basically going to be, we're going to uh, rename this. Hello. And I'm going to duplicate this three times. So this will be South, East, and this will be Wall West. All right. So we'll start with the North Wall. Um, this is going to be a location of twenty five hundred. The scale is going to be. 180 and a value of 4. I can plug this into the level now. Uh, the south wall, south wall is basically at negative 2500 and 184. The east wall is going to be at is at zero, four thousand zero, and a scale of fifty one and four. And then I'll grab the wall west. This will be at the other side, so negative four thousand. 51 and 4. There we go. Again, all of this is detailed in the documentation. I actually do not need the player start. And so in the case of the brick barrier, we're going to put the player in. It's going to be built into uh, the scene itself. And we'll activate that player. But 
So we're going to remove that for right now. Okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, there's a lot of par parklets in the air. All right, so we're going to create a new folder called input. And what we need to do here is under input, uh, input actions. So this is going to be uh, IA move, and then the other one is going to be IA button. Um, we do need to make create, I'm going to make the mapping right now, input mapping context. So default. Um, we do need to go into Just check to make the button. Uh, we do want to make sure this is a Boolean. And then for the move, um, this is going to be a vector uh, 2D. And we should be able to save everything. So now that we've got that, we can now go into our default mapping. Uh, we'll add, so here is move, and then we'll set up button. <coughs> so this right here, we're going to, uh, it's not going, we're going to go to the mouse. And this is going to be the mouse, uh, yeah, to the axis x, x y. We are going to also add. Let me see. The gamepad, the left thumbstick to the axis. Uh, for the button, uh, we are going to, basically there will be th three here. Uh, first one, spacebar. Next one is going to be the left mouse button. And then... Uh, we go to the gamepad. Um, so they're, they're talking about face button... Uh, so they're talking about the uh, north house, uh, east west, or the a AX. We're going to use the bottom button. So already we've plugged in both of the, we've set up basically our mouse interface, and we've got um, uh, we've got basically the mouse set up, and we've got the um, you know space bar, left mouse button, and the gamepad um, set up. So we've got gamepad and keyboard and mouse set up automatically. Gate. Uh, if you want to go up to move and add more, um, like add w WSAD, that's up to you. Um, that's not that not that big of a deal. But essentially, here is our move move bindings. Uh, again, save everything. All right. So now we are going to now create back down here um, I am going to create uh, a new blueprint class um, this is going to be game mode based just so I have this set up um, this is going to be the bricks game mode and we'll put BP and BP in front of it um, and then I'm going to create a new, um, let me just make sure. Yeah. 
So the next blueprint class I'm going to create is a, is going to be our pawn. This is going to be BP bat. All right. So the first thing that we are going to do, uh, let me bring this up here. Let's bring up my details panel. So auto possess player right now is disabled. We're actually going to turn this on and set this player zero. So basically when, when we start our game, we're going to take possession of this particular bat. Now we are doing a single player game. If you were to do something multiplayer, um, we would be we would be setting this up very differently. But we're doing a single player game. Um, not going to worry too much about a lot of other things. So we're going to we can use the auto possess right here. Um, in theory, we could we could set set something in the world and have it possessed by an AI. What is the AI controller class? Um, disabled. set that to none yeah we're not we don't we only want to possess auto possessed by the player um, ba -ba -bum. okay so let's start with what we've got well, how we're going to start here um, we are going to create um, a scene and this is going to be the bat Root. All right. So basically, we're basically help. This is the child of the default scene. The purpose of this is that we're going to move the bat around. Um, we want something that is scale of one across the board and what whatnot. So here we're going to actually from here we'll add the cube. Uh, this will be our model. And then we will then on the root again uh, the scene the bat root we're gonna put the um, the box collision here as well. All right. So first thing that we want to do with the again we're gonna rename this to collision. Again, extend make these box extents 50 across the board to start with. Um, so that this basically matches now. Again, I, this is now matches the box that we have. Um, the scale that we want. So the model here. Um, we want our MBAT material on there. And we're going to play with a scale of uh, 5, 2, and 3. This is... And then I'm just going to take the collision. I'm just going to parent it to it. Just make sure. No. So I'm going to undo that. Do 5, 2, 3. So that, that basically it's now matching with that. On the root, um, we're going to add an arrow component. And it's going to be at negative 250. Uh, we are going to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, actually, it's negative 90. And then we're going to make this just slightly bigger. So if I click, so basically we've got a direction where, basically that's exactly going to be our forward direction. Um, I hope I've built this correctly. All right. Finally, on our default scene root, we're going to add a component called spline. All right, that's not what I want. There we go, spline. Okay, 
a spline. So basically think of a spline as a curve um, defined by multiple points. And that, that, that's basically what, you will, you, what you're using a spline for. Um, for our purposes right now, we are going to uh, select the first spline point. And I'm going to set this to negative 3,500. I'm going to go to the first spline, po uh, the last spline point, and that's going to be at 3,500. Uh, not at 100. Let's go back. Yeah, there we go. So basically, I've got this. What? I'm, and so for our purposes, I'm making a straight line. There's a point here, and there's a point over here. Um, you can see that there is this square piece right here. That is, um, that is, if I can grab it, that is essentially um, splines work off what are called Bezier curves. And so basically, there's a point, and it has two endpoints that indicate, you know, how the the the, the line is coming into the point. Um, for our purposes, we want it perfectly straight, so I'm un undoing the, you know, what is the active tangent, leave tangent, you know, so so on. All right. Um, when we when the brick moves, it's going to slide back and forth. Um, it's going to rotate, and that's why it's built this way. It's work. So let's compile this. Um, there are two variables we're going to set up uh, for, and these are going to be, this is going to be a float and this is going to be point on spline. The other one that we're going to set up here, um, no, I don't need to make it, it's going to be also a float. And it's going to be sensitivity, um, and we're going to set this to 50. So basically, this is um, dealing with input. We're going to multiply what we get off our, our mouse, um, and, or our, what we get off what we get off our inputs, and multiply it by 50. Um, this is going to be ed ed edit and simple to be true. I think point. Uh, point of spline is going to be true as well. There are going to be three um, functions we're going to set up. So we're going to. So this is going to be center, center bat, move bat, and this last one is going to be set up input. All right. We're going to start with I'm just reading through here. We're going to go to the event graph. So on begin play, um, basically we're going to use we're going to call setup input we're going to call the center bat function, and then we'll just call move bat. All right, bat is going to be placed on the spline based on this point on spline, so that's why we're not we don't have to plug in any variables. Uh, on tick, it is basically the move bat function is getting called every tick. That's all that we need to set up for begin play and tick. We are going to set up the event for IA move, and I'm going to also go, I'm going to um, I'm just going to bring bring in button right now just so that it's here. Uh, but let's do let's do the move function. So we want to um, get all of the information. Where is the? 
So action value right here is a 2D structure. We're going to split the, split the struct pin so we get the X and Y value because we only need the um, X value. So this is literally, we're going to take this and multiply it by our sensitivity. We'll take the point on the spline, and we're basically going to add this value to the to the point on spline, and then we're just going to set it right away. And this is going to be on triggered. So that's basically our move function. Like as we read um, off of uh, left and right, we we can do move here. Um, I'm gonna go. Just this is gonna be a, do a little bit extra. I'm gonna add a variable. Um, can move. This is gonna be a boolean. Uh, compile. I'll turn this on just so it's at, by default it's on. Um, basically, I'm gonna grab out the boolean. grab the branch and I'm going to plug that in through here. So just basically I've got this one boolean right here so that when basically we can turn the, we have yeah and I'm going to make this instant editable. Um and I'm also going to set a category of bat. And I'm just going to assign them all to that category. So that we, they're all they're all in that one category. Um, this will allow us later to go back and be like, hey, turn off this turn off movement. Again, a great way to name your booleans is a form of question. So this is can move. True, it's true or false. So we can compile this. Um, center bat is going to be interesting do the center bat function um, we are going to get a reference of our spline and we actually want to get the spline length in this case we're going to multiply it <coughs> excuse me <coughs> by 0.5 And then our point on the spline, we're going to set that and that's pretty much all that we need for this function right here. It's just getting the spline, um, getting the point on the spline and then using the spline, getting its length. Now this is, they count the curves, all that, you know, from, from the end to the begin, from the beginning to the end, there's a, there's a, that path length. So if we had like a particular curve, it would find the midpoint based on the distance of that curve. All right, I don't need center bat. Uh, let's do setup input. This is interesting. So here we're going to get get the controller and target itself um, so for our purposes we get it we have a controller object reference we need to cast this to player controller so cast to player controller and then here we can get the get Enhance input local player subsystem. You get this nice huge block. And the first thing that we are going to do is ask if this is valid. Um, yeah, we'll go. We'll go with this one in this case. Uh, they're showing another one, uh, another node, but basically this is. Hey, it's an if. 
we'll plug this into here. If this is valid, then I'll put a reroute node here. And we'll do add mapping. Mapping context. True, the asset again is going to be our default. And then we don't need to do anything else. There's no priorities, no options that we need to add. Pull that in a little bit tighter. Again, the, the, there is a version of what they what's shown in the slides is is a is valid um, block that com basically combines these two together. But I'm gonna this is the same thing. It's is valid into an if branch. Same same thing. Um, so this is basically setting up our inputs. Save everything. Uh, and the last one is going to be our move bat. All right, so we need a reference to our spline. We need the reference to our point on the spline. And what we need is the node is to get transform at spline point. Sorry. Wrong, wrong node is get transform at distance along spline. And so point on spline is basically our distance. So now we know based on the spline and the point on the spline, um, again, everything here is going to be done within our relative space. So this is basically, we're going to plug this into, um, hold on. Here is our bat root, and we're going to get a uh, relative transform. Sorry, not get. We need want to set. Set relative transform. And we're just basically going to plug this right into here. Grab all this, and we'll plug that into the, the function. And that's pretty much what we're doing. And every every take, we're basically saying for for the, the, our particular spline, what is the point on the spline? Again, that's being updated by the move bat. That's basically up. Basically, move bat is just updating this. So every frame, we're basically calling this function over and over again. Um, we will save everything let's go to our bricks game and we will drop the bat into world and we're going to put this at zero and we'll put this at negative 2000 like you can see can move So we'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye on point on the spline right here as we let's select you. And you can see that I'm over, and I can go further. So I'm moving back and forth, and we can see that again. These values have been all set up for you to, you know be easy to use. The one thing I'm actually going to go back into is the move bat function. Not the move bat. Um, yes. No. Um, it's in the event graph, isn't it? Yeah, it is.
So here we go. Yeah, I'm going to do the after after this. So what I want to do is um, I want a min uh, range. That's not what I'm thinking. Spline. Oh, it's, it's, get spine length. There we go. Um. We want to plug this in between these two. So we want the minimum value between these two. And then the max between this and zero. So if it's below zero. Um, yeah, so if it's below zero, um, I want to go bring it back up to zero. Um, and then I'm just going to plug this right back into here. So again, the idea is that um, I don't want to. I want to make sure that I'm. So what what we saw is that when I press play, click on the bat. So when I went over here, as I kept going further, um, I was going beyond seven thousand, and down here I was going below. Let's actually uh, let's go back. Let's break this link for one moment. Let's show you what the issue at hand one more time. So I can go beyond 7,000, and you can see there was a delay coming back, and I can go below, and I've gone twice as far, far as I should. Um, so the goal of what we're doing here, and this is just extra, is just making sure that I'm within, again, the max, the within the length of my spline, um, on the max side, on the high side, and on the low side. And this is extra credit. These are things that you'd, you'd probably set up and do um, normally. I'm just going to compile, save everything. Just make sure i got everything in the bat. Yeah, I do. Okay, so now that I've got that up, uh, that, you know, we've got this, the bat up and running. Question. Do you have a question? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to move into part two right away. Um, I'm actually going to stop the video here, and then I'm going to restart the video.